This day left me with just one question. What is prestige supposed to mean? Hi there, my name is Kevin, and I make honest and to-the-point narrated video tours about premium hotels and flights all over the world. This is episode 140, and today we're in Bangkok at the Okora Prestige, marketing the 49th hotel brand featured on the channel. The full tour and review coming up in 10 seconds. And welcome to Bangkok. Located on the corner of Plonchit Road and Wireless Road, the location and the beautiful building itself are two things that the Okora surely has going for it. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for this stay, or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. The 240 room hotel, which opened in 2012, occupies floors 24 through 34 of this building. There's a small ground floor lobby, which also connects to a small shopping center. For check-in, we head up to the 24th floor. Like all of my videos, this one is not sponsored by the hotel I'm staying at. Imagine if Okora was paying me to make this video, and then I presented it to you as a review. Sponsored, unbiased reviews simply don't exist. So today, you're only going to hear my own personal, honest opinions, and nothing more, because this hotel stay is 100% self-funded. Luxurious, contemporary, austere. When talking about the common areas of the hotel, all of which I near universally love, those are the three words that seem to fit best. As we head up to the 24th floor now and check out the reception area and bar, I need to tell you a short personal story. While this channel is less than two years old, my love for traveling was an active and present part of my life for literally as long as I can remember but my love and curiosity about hotels in particular began a few decades ago when I stayed at the Okora Hotel in Tokyo, the first luxury hotel that I ever stayed at. It may have been 25 years ago, but I remember every detail about that stay as if I was there last week. The formal but warm hospitality, the retro lounge, the curtains that opened at the push of a button, the smell of the hallways, the lock boxes behind the reception desk, the taste of the cornflakes, the unbearable heat wave, the tableside preparation of the Caesar salad, the fact that the staff couldn't really pronounce my name, and even more so, the fact that they knew who I was. It was all so foreign, yet so familiar. From that hotel stay, a fascination began that went much further than just wanting to travel to places. Now I was obsessed with the entire process, from research, to planning, to trying new airlines and staying at new hotels. So let's just say, the Okora Prestige in Bangkok had some sizable Japanese slippers to fill. On some fronts, it was exactly what I was expecting. On others, mainly related to the room, it was a bit of a disappointment. Right now, you can see the reception area and truly the central hub from which all of the other common areas break off from. I love this space for a few reasons, primarily though, the sound quality. The soaring ceilings and the 10-story tall atrium give this hotel the perfect ambient buzz. No matter if it's before dawn and empty or filled to the brim with people, it just has a really pleasant ambiance. Now we're outside at the extension of the lobby bar, which I'm sure you noticed has quite the love of Campari. Let's take a closer look at where we are. Bangkok has two airports, BKK or Suwanapum, which serves mostly full-service airlines, and Dunmong, or DMK, which serves mostly local, low-cost carriers. Without traffic, they're both about a 30 to 40 minute drive, but this can increase quite a bit during rush hour, especially from Suwanapum. Once at the hotel though, you're really in a great spot. All right, back inside, up those stairs in the lobby, we have the Michelin-starred Elements restaurant, which, when I was there, was open from Tuesday through Saturday. Further back on this same floor, we find one of the hotel's best features, its cantilevered pool. From the 25th floor, the 25-meter pool hangs over Plonchit Road and has some pretty good views.
Just across the street is the Park Hyatt and then the new Rosewood in the distance. Two hotels which hopefully will make it to the channel next year. Normally, I don't film inside spas, but they wouldn't let me film anywhere near inside the gym since there were always guests inside, the four times that I stopped by, which is understandable. But the spa was empty, so they thought it would be a good substitute. It's a small reception area and continues the understated style of the hotel. It's a very large, well-equipped, and busy gym. Of all the hotels I reviewed on this channel, this gym and the one just down the road at the Kimpton Malai were certainly the busiest. All right, let's head to the room. The atrium here and that low hum that reverberates throughout the whole area is giving me Mandarin Oriental Singapore vibes. At the bottom is the staircase leading to the lobby. Okora is not a brand that normally fusses around with 30 different room categories. I had a deluxe king room. There are also corner kings, and then they have the club level rooms and the suites. Let me set the stage for what I was expecting. I knew the rooms were not the most modern looking, but I expected them to be in pristine condition. I'm a big fan of the Nico Hotel in Saigon, Nico being a chain owned by Okora, and I was just expecting the same or better quality of fixtures as the Nico. But the room disappointed. As we look around, a quick history about Okora. The original Okora, the one that I spoke about earlier, opened in 1962 in Tokyo. Since then, the Okora brand has expanded mostly throughout Japan. In 2010, Okora bought the JAL City Hotels, which included the JAL City Hotel brand and the Nico Hotel brand. In 2012, Okora began opening international properties under the Okora Prestige brand in Bangkok and Taipei. The prestige meant to refer to the heightened sense of luxury at the properties. Currently, there are six Okora or Okora prestige properties outside of Japan, with a further four in the pipeline, including locations in Phnom Penh and Saigon. The rooms are very compartmentalized and do feature good connectivity, but it's in a pretty old school way with the dated but functional screen next to the bed, from which you can control the temperature and lighting. I did appreciate the desk area though, and the very comfortable chairs on hand. This is definitely a business hotel, and it shows. On to the mini bar, and this is where the condition of some things in the room started to really show poorly. I'll give you details in a bit. But in general, the mini bar was well stocked with glass bottled water, Nespresso pods, and loose leaf green tea, which was unfortunately in an unsealed container. Now onto the first part of the bathroom, which can be closed off from the room if you choose. The bathroom features Elemis products and has a large wet room with a shower and a standard sized bathtub. The setup is a little strange for the basin though, since it's not aligned with the mirror. You might be thinking, well, you can just stand in front of the mirror. Well, yeah, sure. What I'm thinking though, is every time someone shaves in front of the mirror, 
it'll be raining down on all the toiletries instead of in the sink. Across is the walk-in closet, which has plenty of room no matter how you like to travel. Lastly, we head to the toilet room, which is completely separate and has an itsy bitsy tiny hand washing sink and a washlet style toilet. And of course, we can't forget about the view. It was cloudy or raining for my entire stay in Bangkok this time, but you can see the Park Hyatt and the Rosewood properties again across the street. One thing that I did love were the paper cranes that were placed as part of the turndown service, a detail that I very fondly remember from my stay in Tokyo. Allow me to quickly show off some of the areas where the room was a letdown. I think it all speaks for itself, but a lot of it was just a whole lot of small areas that were either dusty or dirty or scuffed. Here and there is fine. It's not gonna make it to the video, but when it's all over the room, I think it becomes a problem, especially when you're specifically branding this as one of your prestige properties. The disappointing part for me is most of these things that are in poor condition in the room are easily and relatively cheaply repairable. From a food cleanliness perspective, there were also little ants around the sugar packets and the green tea was housed in a dirty vessel. There's no other way to say it. To whoever stayed in the room after me, I went ahead and cleaned it off for you a little bit. Okay, let's check out the food venues. In the small mall area that I spoke about earlier, there is a patisserie which serves pastries and breads, but it's not actually connected to the hotel itself. Then there is the up and above restaurant which serves a variety of cuisines in the lobby lounge area as well as the proper restaurant where the breakfast buffet is also available. My room wasn't ready on time, so I was offered lunch on the house while I waited, and I can't pass up a sando, especially a free one. The other restaurant is Yamazato. The Okora is unique in that you have two choices for breakfast. You can either have the international buffet, which we'll see soon, or you can have a Japanese set menu at Yamazato. Simply because I get really tired of buffets, I did plan to have the Japanese option, but I was just a little less than excited by the fact that 30 minutes after opening, it was still empty and the decor just wasn't doing anything for me. From photos that I've seen, the set breakfast does look beautiful, but I think I made the right choice deciding to choose the buffet. This is one of the nicer buffet spreads that I've seen in a while, and up there with the Kimpton Malai for my favorite breakfast in Bangkok.
There were small Indian and Chinese stations, as well as extensive Western selections, including this impressive spread of cold cuts and cheeses. The pastries were all very beautiful, but admittedly not the greatest. And there was also a live cooking station where you could order eggs benedict, french toast, pork satay, and all of your other standard egg dishes. Considering that this is not the Japanese option, I was also happy to see a nice Japanese station with a variety of Zensai style appetizers and a few rolls. Overall, a fantastic breakfast in a beautiful setting. The restaurant does also have an outdoor terrace. All right, let's head into the flip-flop score. If the room was in top condition, my impression overall of this hotel would have been very different. What was great though, was the warm but formal hospitality that you'd expect in a Japanese hotel and all of the common areas and lounges, as well as the extensive buffet. I'm not writing off Okora yet though. I have the rebuilt Okora Tokyo booked for a trip next year. I really do hope that you enjoyed the tour today. If you did, Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. I'll see you next time from the brand new The Standard Bangkok.